Today's lecture continues our series on cranial nerves with cranial nerve number eight, the vestibular cochlear nerve. Now, the vestibular cochlear nerve begins again at the pontomedullary junction on the lateral most aspect of it. It continues anteriorly where it eventually goes through the internal acoustic meatus. It is a special sensory type of nerve and its function is for both hearing and balance coordination. Now once it passes through the internal acoustic meatus, the vestibular cochlear nerve continues and has a very simple pathway where it just splits and innervates the vestibule and the cochlear aspects of the head. Now, the cochlear part of the nerve is associated with hearing and the vestibular portion is associated with balance. Both of these contain chambers inside of our cranium with specialized hair follicles which are able to detect our head position or rotational movements based on fluid volumes and how the fluid moves around these hair cells. Now, a result of a lesion of the vestibular cochlear nerve could result in vestibular neuritis and labyrinthinitis. Now, vestibular neuritis is a lesion uh, actually an inflammation that is specific only to the vestibular portion of cranial nerve number eight. So symptoms of vestibular neuritis would include um, vomiting, virgo, nausea. There would be a, a difficulty in maintaining one's balance. Now with labyrinthitis, it is an inflammation of both the vestibular and the cochlear portion. So the symptoms of labyrinthitis would be similar to vestibular neuritis with the addition of hearing loss or tinnitus, which is uh, uh, an extreme ringing in the ears that isn't actually there. And that is cranial nerve number eight.